Nobody's listening, right? Hi, Andy. Hello. I'm so happy to talk to you as though no one were listening. Are you now? I am. Is anyone listening now? Yes. This is from Hannah. Going to labor with my first, and yet betcha, I've got the Patreon backlog on deck to get me through. Thank you for the belly laughs and distractions. At this point, your voices are probably just as familiar to my baby as mine and my husband's. Oh my gosh, that is so touching. Hey, congrats wow. on the baby, because I and think this congrats. was like a week ago, so you're oh in gosh. it. That's amazing. That's so exciting. That is exciting. Man, do you remember that time? I sort of do remember that first few days. Those are uh, pretty memorable times. The first few days are, I don't know, for me, were pretty glorious. Agreed. And then it kind of hits you. <laughs> <laughs> and buckle not, up. No, not, I think... Kidding. I think for me, it hit me physically because I think for a few days, you're kind of riding high on the hormones. Yeah, you literally, there's that, um, what do they, they call it's it? Like, like a, a glow, glow or something. And it's real. I remember there's a picture of me right after giving birth to Teddy. My sister came over to visit and I look spectacular. Mm. And then there's a picture of me not 24 hours later. <laughs> and I look like... Kicked. Kicked. Like, like... I stayed out partying. I did drugs, like hard drugs. I did soft drugs. I did medium drugs. Mm -hmm. I look wrecked. Listen, though, you know, you were, my radar last week was correct. You were sick. I was sick. And you looked at times a little kicked. I did. And right <laughs> well, now. Well, I don't need to know it. Well, yeah, I'm just saying, you have transformed. You are finally really back to life today, and oh. you look glorious to me. Wow. So you have the glow today. That's so sweet. And I, I mean, feel like I can really imagine it again because how I saw you this past week. <laughs> just looking like <laughs> a swamp creature. I from will tell below. you if this eases the blow I just gave you, there was a moment during your sickness where. I think I was sitting outside or something and you walked outside and you were like, you were very sick. Mm -hmm. And I very inappropriately in my mind was like so turned on by you and how you looked. But I, <laughs> a feeble, I what's that called? Like when your thing is like a feeble, I don't know. Yeah. It wasn't that you just, you just looked really good to me, but I, I did not make a pass or any sort of well, thing like that because it would have been wildly <laughs> inappropriate i just want you to know though you, you. you didn't look kicked the whole time you know i think i might have like looked worse than i no it's pretty i got pretty sick but you took such good care of me thank you did my best you are a good good caregiver you really are so it's like not too heavy-handed it's just like a, a nice exactly. amount exactly it's like if you, you need me, me let to me do know. my healing thing it's not codependent where you're like are you okay am i doing enough it's not about you mm -mm. you you brought me i realized i think my like sickness love language is just food that first day i, I have was a question about the first day i'm so glad you brought this up actually go on sorry okay the first day i was like panicking almost you had a whole day to you know you took the kids to school you had a whole day of work and stuff and I was like I don't know how the food is gonna work and you know I can't go to the store to get food and you were blah 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 count. but you really like were on top of the food situation and kept me fed <laughs> and so one of my duties that I wanted to do for you was bring you water yes that first day <laughs> You drank <laughs> an ungodly amount of water so much that I had a lot of thoughts. One was, what are you doing with the water? <laughs> what? Two, what the fuck is going on? Can someone drink that much water? <laughs> what? Three, whoa, do I not drink enough water at all? Like, it was really blowing my mind. Then day two of you being sick... That water consumption, more than halved, if not really? a third. There was something that first day you were sick. I, you, I wish I would have kept track. I was bringing you I pictures. No <laughs> I mean, I, I pivoted to pictures of water at one point because I was like, should I just bring you a picture of water? And you're like, yeah. But 
what the fuck? <laughs> I had no idea. Your body just wanted it. I Well, yeah, I guess you're flushing stuff out. It didn't seem abnormal to me. It was bonkers. And truly, if we compared first day versus the second day, you would be astonished. That's amazing. Yeah, it's weird. Well, listen, you listen to your body. You know what it's telling you it needs. That first night for dinner, you made ramen. Yeah, smart man. Like the cheap packaged Manchurian soy flavored ramen Mm -hmm. with oyster crackers. Mm -hmm. Did you know that that's like my absolute go-to sick, ooh, you got a mosquito on you, meal? I knew that you like ramen. I think everyone... I think everyone kind of enjoys ramen when they're sick. It's kind of comforting. Okay. And then I knew that you liked saltines or like oyster crackers in your ramen. So when I was at the store, I saw those oyster crackers. And I was like, I bet this will hit good. Oh, you're so sweet. Yeah. Well, made it through. All is well. I have to say, you know, that was a a rough and tumble one. Mm. But no one else. And we had visited my sister. No one else got sick, which I was glad about. Yeah, not yet. Um, (laughs) And... (laughs) <laughs> well, I think, you know, hopefully, I don't know. But also, I hadn't been sick in a very long time. Yeah. I, it occurred to me, you know, I feel like a couple of years ago, especially when the kids were little, that sort of sick would happen like three, four times a year. When did you have COVID? When did we all, most of us got December, COVID? December. It was because December. I remember that I was had lost my taste and I was so sad that it was leading up to Christmas Eve dinner. Whoa. Okay. Right. Yeah. So so that was the last time I was sick, honestly. Yeah. Crazy. Same same for me. Knock wood. Knock wood. Whatever. Anyway, uh, we have so much to discuss, (laughs) but first we want to thank our sponsor Dipsy for supporting Nobody's Listening, right? Dipsy is an app that has over 1,000 spicy audiobooks. They bring scenarios to life with immersive soundscapes and realistic characters, and they are realistic. Discover stories about second chance romances, adventurous vacation flings, and hot and heavy hookups. Get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash NLR. Let me turn the AC on here real quick. (laughs) Okay. First of all, speaking of you saying I'm looking good, I think all it took was I threw on a bold lip. Mm. (laughs) Okay. Okay. If I knew this would have this effect on you, I would bold lip more often. Maybe Bold lip more often. Okay, great. Now, second of all, I had an experience so exciting... Hmm. regarding my physical appearance, which I do think is meaningless. You know, I do think we're all just bags of cells walking around the universe experiencing itself in each of our bags of cells. Oh, you got it. Good job. Um, But it also feels good to feel like you look good. Yeah. So I, we have, you know, a, what's it called? A mailing address for our business. Okay. That is at a place of business, right? Oh, okay. When at, was this? I'm so confused. <laughs> this was y- you've been sick. a day ago. Okay. Two days ago. Okay. I got a phone call. Hey, your driver's license has expired. Oh. And we're updating all of our things, and we need a legit driver's license for you to continue hosting your mailing address here. Oh, sure. I said, okay, Mm -hmm. I will send it to you. Give me the email because I'm not coming in because I'm sick. Mm -hmm. She gave me the email. Oh. And you know who I'm talking about. Oh, my gosh. Do you know who I'm talking about? Nice petite lady. Yes. Yes, I do know. (laughs) I love her. And I sent an email. Here's the updated image you've requested. Thanks. Yeah. And she wrote back. And I sent a picture of my driver's license. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Elizabeth. Your lovely smile reminds me of Jacqueline Smith. I am a Charlie Angels fan. So you bet your bippy I took to the keyboards That's where I'm going right now, Jacqueline Smith. Jack, J-A-C-K-L-Y-N. J-A-C-K-L-I-N. L-Y-N. Jacqueline Smith. L-Y-N. Now, interestingly, it's hard to find a photo of this particular woman smiling. (laughs) She has a closed mouth kind of little smirk she does very well. 
Oh, she does have a little smirk. Does your driver's license have that smirk? No, I'm full teeth, but... Oh, I do see... Well, it's, I made the mistake of typing in Jacqueline Smith, Charlie's Angels, and there's too many pictures of okay, the other ladies. Okay, go to her, go to her younger thing. Look at this. Okay. Mm-hmm. You don't see it? No, 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 no. I, I do. I just have to say this. I don't necessarily see it for me, but I do see a resemblance to my mom, who I've obviously been told I look a lot alike. Yeah. I, I, there is. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, my God. Hold on. <laughs> Look at this photo. Holy okay. shit. Are you ready? Have you seen this photo? <laughs> I don't know. Boom. Whoa. That I one do looks look like, like you. Me. I do look like that. Damn, well, what a. That's hot. What a joy. I know you don't like role playing that much, <laughs> but would you do a little Charlie's Angels role play? Well, I don't know enough about them. Well, it's just like maybe you pretend that you're this actress and it's like I'm the grip on the set. Uh, oh, okay. And like we have a fling. Whoopsies! I dropped my Charlie's Angel like prop gun. Oh wait, can I? Hold on, that's fun. <laughs> that's very fun. Why am I changing it? That's plenty fun. But I have another pitch for you. <laughs> okay. I'm the audio guy, and you're like, I think I need to get mic'd up again. You know, because yes. I keep helping you with. Well, the... this is that's yucky because I think that is kind of a invasive experience for a lot of people. Okay. <laughs> Sorry to, sorry to ruin that. Who for is you. this? Wait, Jacqueline Smith, do you see this picture of her at 77, like well, leaping hoping, on, some, on, some, on some man? I hope that she. She I, does a flirty workout at 77. How about that? I want us to be doing this at 77. Well, I'm already feeling a little bit like I need to do something with my body. Like, we've been watching. Um, we've been watching. Okay, I see it. <laughs> we have to post this. This is insane. <laughs> We've been watching. I hope that she meant I look like Jacqueline Smith, like circa when she was in her 40s or whatever. And that she's not like some huge <laughs> super fan that has like an altar of her, like all through the ages yeah. and knows everything. Um, so my, we last night started the Secret Lives of Mormon Wives. Ugh, I don't, I think I might check You're done. out. It, what, you, I watched the first episode and then I sort of watched the second episode with you. Did the second episode pull you in more or are you I don't know I mean the first episode I was half like for the first half just fully enthralled again like Love Island it's such an interesting kind of study of human behavior and once again I'm like wow we really live in our bubbles where people are normal somewhat normal and like I don't know these people are out of their minds but what I the takeaway that I'm linking to this is watching them dance on their mom talk videos. Yeah. I'm like, I never learned how to dance like that. I used to be a really good dancer and I love dancing. Mm -hmm. I haven't learned how to twerk properly. Yeah. I haven't learned how to make my ass clap. I haven't learned, like, there are a lot, of, and I have, I think, a clappable like, ass. A clappable ass. Yeah, okay. I haven't learned some of those like moves on TikTok mm -hmm. that I'm like I I need to catch up. Are you gonna just start practicing? Are you gonna go to a class? I I think it has a lot to do with your era of when you were dancing. It, this wasn't as big of a thing. Yeah, you were. It was early days of. Now you know, there is a type of dance that is more in line with my thing, which is shuffle dance. Have you seen this? It's on Instagram and it's online and it's, I'm sure, I don't know if it was born there, but it is like a lot of moms doing it. Mm -hmm. And it's like doing the running man on steroids. Do you remember the running man? Mm -hmm, of course. And I'm very good at the running man. Mm -hmm. By the way, at, at my sister's house, were you impressed by my butterfly? Stroke? Oh, uh, yeah, I caught a little bit of it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just like one of those things that you get it or you don't <laughs> were you trying to like um yeah i caught some of it. you did a lot of it didn't you well were i was you teaching just... teddy and turner how to do it oh got it got it okay you're good at it i guess i am <laughs> hey just do you know the difference between you being like i'm gonna lean into a dance that's like the running man versus leaning into the like mom talk twerking shake your butt dance you know the difference in my eyes of those two right I don't. We don't need more running man situation. Oh, but that might be the one that really clicks with me. 
Okay. You know, I just got that like serious bra. Mm-hmm. It's like you strap it on and you tighten it from every angle, mm-hmm. and it keeps those puppies like legit against you. Yeah. I got that because of the shuffle dance. Okay. <laughs> Good luck on this journey. <laughs> Okay. Okay, so I wanted to go down a road with you that I'm not on Reddit much. I know you've had times in your life where you're on Reddit a I've, lot. I was on a, a lot this week. Oh, I bet. And you have certain feeds that you subscribe to. My feeds are like, there's a music software I like. There's a video software. Like, it's what you would think my feeds are. Mm-hmm. There's a disease I thought I might have. I'm still on that feed. But every once in a while, it feels like Reddit also just pepper in some other things like this is big on Reddit, right? Yes, yes. So this one. Those are kind of the gems that pop up. Yes. Yeah. So this popped up for me and I just read the top part, the headline and was like, oh, I'm intrigued by this and want to talk to my. Uh, Do you remember my name? Twerking. Um, who are you? Say my name. Um, say my name. Say my name. I'm like really not remembering your name right now. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'll just okay. AIO, which means am I off? Am I overreacting? <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is from the am I overreacting okay. subreddit. That makes sense. I-D-G-A-F. I don't give a fuck. Yes. Okay. So am I overreacting for wanting a divorce after finding thousands of photos of myself, a 33-year-old male, sleeping on my wife's phone how many 31 female thousands so here and he has a little description my wife and i have been together for 11 years and have three amazing kids we have never really we have never really had any serious issues she's a great mother and has been nothing but an amazing partner for all these years however the other night i was looking for a picture of our son on our phone and i found an album called my name sleeping with 9,631 photos oh my God. of myself <laughs> sleeping over the years. 9,631, exclamation mark. She never told me about this or sent me any of the photos. It's just me sleeping in numerous different angles. I can't even believe I'm writing this, but I'm so creeped out and don't know how to move forward. I confronted her about the pictures, and she just got annoyed that I had her phone and offered no explanation. I feel very violated and am uncomfortable sleeping next to her. I feel like I can't be with this person anymore. What should I do? This is weird, right? Or am I overreacting? So weird. The not the sheer the sheer volume of it. Like, I have to. Sorry to take it to like such a dark place. That's listen. <laughs> I expect nothing less from you. Well, so this week in the news headlines, I don't know if you've seen about this French woman uh-uh. um, that basically people her kids were worried she was getting Alzheimer's. She's like in I think seventy ish or okay. late sixties now. Was forgetting things. Was like tripping and falling i don't know was really out of it okay and she was going to doctors and they weren't no no one was like figuring out what the fuck was going on okay she gets called into the police department this trial's just begun i think that they have 51 men that they're putting on trial because um her husband was crushing up drugs and putting them in her food so that he and other men could rape her and then he would clean up her body and she was (laughs) jesus fucking christ what are you doing well what are you doing (laughs) well listen it's not the same but (laughs) what is wrong with you it's top of mind because it's happening. You t- Horrific. Anyway, <sighs> it does. It's like a consent. This man is sleeping. <laughs> and- the, uh, just tell your story. This story. Well, let's not. And then let's talk about this other thing. Don't. We don't have to. We don't have to link them completely together. Just finish okay. your thing. Well, just how horrifying. She did not know. It was news to her mm-hmm. for decades. This was happening. Okay. Okay. So. Horrific. Obviously. Horrific. Beyond. This again, I'm like, 
what the fuck is going on with humans? And no offense, but like mostly men, like what, what is happening? I mean, I guess it's been going on for a long, long time and I don't know. Anyway, Mm -hmm. I would be creeped out (laughs) going back to this Reddit thing. (laughs) I would, well, if the tables were turned and if it was a man, let's do the double standard thing. If a man had sleeping pictures, 9,000 of them. Oh, my God. Done deal. Like, no one would bat an eyelash that you're going, I want out of this. I'm creeped out. You would assume that there's other shit going on. And it is like, let's get back to the woman, though, because this is the Reddit we're dealing with. What, what is she doing with those? And why do you need that Many nine thousand photos is a lot of one thing. Why? And also, when he brought it up to her, she was like, "You had my phone." I I don't. That's a red flag to me in in a, its own way. Like how so? That he he took her phone without asking? No, no. <laughs> that she her reaction is so nonchalant about it that like. It's almost like she thinks it's so normal that you're going, it's like gaslighting. Like, wait, is this normal? Well, he doesn't even say like what she says. It just says like she seemed annoyed. Okay, if you found, or if I found those of you and you were like, why are you in my phone? Like, give me that and just like kind of brush me off. I would instantly be like, hey, hey, hey. Like we we need to talk about this. Yeah, this is this is um, making me uncomfortable. This feels really. I'm weird. actually getting anxious. Like how you're saying this because I have the tone. You do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like we've had a few of these conversations. Yeah, you've heard this tone a couple times. <laughs> and this like, is when like, I know. Yeah. Oh shit! I'm about to have like my worldview changed, and I need to do some work. <laughs> I, I I was wrong. I guess I can't do this anymore. I can't take these photos. But what? Like, it's weird. Even if he found them, okay, I've taken a few photos of, like, our sleeping children. It's so beautiful. It's a memory. I can see a a world where I take a sleeping photo of you or you of me. Yes, sure. sure. But even if he found 9,000 sleeping photos of a child. Oh, that's still super creepy. It's all very creepy. And I feel like her reaction being like, what? is so strange and i understand why he feels like he can't trust her and he can't sleep around her like what a weird but i do think he needs to come to her again and go like before just saying i'm filing for divorce Mm -hmm. go hey i'm really freaked out by this and Mm -hmm. also your reaction yeah and do you not see how this is a violation yeah and Maybe he came to Reddit so he could go, look, 10,000 people on Reddit (laughs) agree. Yeah. I don't know. That's wild. I would kill to be a fly on the wall for these two going into a couple's therapist on the first day. Is this your, like... And to see how the couple's therapist, when the news is revealed to the couple's therapist, how they react. Yes. Wow. Is this your, like, John Benet Ramsey thing? And when you die, the, like, moment you want to see play no. out like a film? No, I don't. Okay. No. Does, do you think this would rattle? Not even rattle. Do you think this would surprise the couple's therapist? Or is this just any other day at oh, the office? Oh, no. This is juicy. This is a good one where do they're. Do you know how boring therapist's situation must be most of the time. Oh, you had a weird relationship with your mommy? <laughs> no. <laughs> Candy. God. Right, right? That well, kind of stuff you mean? Like, it's no, just the same shit over and over? The same shit over and over. I feel like you're getting a lot of people with the same shit over and over. And right. it's like, now we've established this is a pattern for you. And blah, blah, blah. And to the person that's like the most earth-shattering life and death thing, mm-hmm. you know, and the therapist is having to like. This is the fourth person you've heard say this today to them. Right. This makes your ears perk up. Yes. What about a game show where you have three different couples therapists and you send in the same couple to, and drop this info on them and whichever couple therapist navigates it the best, audience votes, wins? Because I'd well, love to see the how audience, they react. audience though isn't, <laughs> that's, I would too, but the audience voting and winning part of it isn't good gamifying therapy because an audience member isn't a trained like 
they're not a doctor in therapy. They don't know. They might Vote the for one the wrong that person. they think is the best therapist could be like the worst by a long shot. You know, we don't know. There's like therapy isn't just like <laughs> you know there are techniques and okay. Now imagine this movie. Okay, real quick for me. You are this. You go to the couples therapist, right? Then you end up getting a divorce, but you then like start a relationship with the couple therapist, which we've talked about. Okay. It's not bad. good. It's not good. It's bad probably. <laughs> but then, I don't know, six months into your relationship with the couple's therapist, you can't help yourself because this crazy thing happened to you. And one day she leaves her phone out and boom, there's like 500 pictures of you sleeping. Whoa. What, uh, it, what is it about you and your sleeping, or why do you keep picking these people? Wait, sorry. I kind of so out. <laughs> I pulled an Andy. I, wait, so you start dating the couple service after mm -hmm. your divorce? Yeah. The pictures are just like another book on the pile. Like, of course, that is so unethical. Yeah. To date the person who came to you, like whatever. Okay, okay. At that okay. point, you could throw anything on. You could be like, and you open the freezer, and there are heads staring out at you. Okay, what then? Okay, let's redo. Okay, you get a divorce because of this thing. You meet a nice lady, and you guys then get together. But she knows this backstory. But then a year later, you find a thousand photos of you sleeping. I think on you her might want to. You might want to like. And then really take a look at, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think that that's likely. But it's one of those things where I th it could happen, you know? It's like so implausible that it's plausible. Can we, um, speaking of Reddit. Yeah. Yes, I agree. And it is like this gray area. I'm sure there are a lot of people responding going, well, th she you know, maybe got carried away taking pictures of you sleeping. But like of all the betrayals to have, that one seems like something you could overcome. We want to give a huge shout out to this week's partner, Dipsy. Are you looking for a little extra spice in your life? So I have been, and I recently started listening to romance audiobooks on the Dipsy app while just doing my regular life and Spicy. it's gotten me stirred up a little bit it's really fun it's such high quality content yeah just going about my life has never been more entertaining so grocery shopping with a rugged scottish sailor yes please okay um folding laundry with a professor oh. a young hot professor kind of you know maybe my go-to Thank you. So Dipsy is a female-founded app for spicy audiobooks and more. It's created by women for women, and I love that, and I can tell. I feel like it's so rare that you come across something like this, and it's like checking all the boxes. Their app has over a 1,000 spicy audiobooks, all crafted by a team of professional writers and top-tier narrators. So whether you're looking for a rugged cowboy, a Scottish sailor, Fey royalty or the god of the underworld, <laughs> you'll find characters you love on Dipsy. Dipsy is offering an extended 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash NLR. That's 30 days of full access for free when you go to dipseastories.com slash NLR. This is 30 days of full access for free, which you want to do, trust me, when you go to D-I-P-S-E-A stories dot com slash N-L-R. Dipsy stories dot com slash N-L-R. Yeah, the top comment on this is weird. Sure. But like, let's talk about this kind of weird. Divorce feels extreme, especially if there are three kids in the fucking picture edit when I say in the picture using that as a figure of speech not the children literally in the pictures wife took okay so <laughs> <laughs> gosh people on reddit being so I didn't realize that it was going to end up being so, kind like, of a funny thing creepy, it's not funny but clever. like that's why it got upvoted probably. reddit is such a great place for like older middle aged people to be clever so listen I think that that is actually right I think divorce of course is always on the table for everyone mm. at some point. 
I think this. Okay. <laughs> Do you want to play that back? <laughs> no. I think divorce is always on the table for everyone at some point. Well, divorce, yes. If you you know that divorce is an option, should you find out that I'm oh, X, Y, Z? I thought you were just saying in a marriage, divorce is always on the table at some point. No, no, no. At some point is wrong. Just it's always on the table. It's an option to sure. have in a marriage. Yeah. And but I think that the next logical step is not divorce. Mm. I think it's another one or ten conversations with the woman about or couple therapy or, or a couple therapy. Yeah. Ideally. One commenter said, Oh, I bet this is an O C D thing. Like if she doesn't take one, you won't wake up or something like that. Oh, and then someone wow. responded, I have OCD and I second this, especially to the numerical degree at which the collection has accumulated to. Now she is stuck in the cycle. Okay, see? Wow. This is why Reddit is wonderful. You never know the whole story. And that's yeah. why he should circle back and find out what the fuck is going on. She might be really embarrassed if it is OCD. There's a lot of shame involved often with um, afflictions like that. <laughs> I just kind of made that face because I knew you would laugh and I like making you laugh in weird times. Okay. Whoa. Can I read one more of these, which is OCD related? I have OCD. And before I knew it, one of my compulsions was to take selfies of myself. It just felt like I don't exist exist if I can't see myself in a photo. I would look at these selfies a few times a day, reassuring myself that I exist and reminding myself how I look. That's interesting. Wow. What would be crazy, though, is like... I wonder if this sparked people with OCD. Sorry, I just cut you off. But if it triggered people who have obsessive compulsive disorder to start doing this. Oh, like this post. Like, yes. Now I've heard this. Now I must do this. Yeah. 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 (laughs) I think that's a very astute observation question. But dark. <laughs> Not yeah. dark. I don't know. That was interesting. Well, those sorts of weird things are like contagious almost. Like yes. you must, you know, I hope I'm not giving this to someone. Well, but that's, like, yeah. <laughs> you must like, you know, knock on the door jam three times before crossing through or. All right. We've all been there. You know. <laughs> okay. Speaking of Reddit, mm-hmm. are we ready to move on? Are we Reddit to move on? No, not yet. Okay. Oh, go on. Yeah, I meant you. <laughs> we're, re- we're ready to move on from this. Okay. Yeah. On Reddit, mm. I saw a great question that I wanted to ask you. Stop it. No, I'm serious. I wrote it down. Long ago. We like both a couple... had Reddit things? Yes. What okay. are the chances? That seems Pretty weird. high. I've been like in bed for a week looking at Reddit. So um, what... Would you, if someone asked you, what is the biggest scam of all time for humans? What would you say? Catholic Church. I would, I mean, I'm assuming you'd say just like religion. Yeah. That's such a good answer. Yeah. I think mine would be money. Yeah, that's a good one too. But. Sort. Those are obviously broad kind of scams that... I I also, though, see the function that money... Not that I don't see the function that religion can provide for people, but I do see that it was inevitable for there always to be some sort of money-type system as we've evolved. Well, yeah, my brain can't... I'm still like, you know, my brain's not... I don't think that even at 100%, my brain would be able to dissect all that. Mm Mm-hmm. What about just a big scam that's like lower stakes, that's like annoying, you know, whether it's a MLM multi-level marketing thing like Amway or like, what's a scam that annoys me? Plastic. (laughs) Although (laughs) plastic comes in handy sometimes. (laughs) Oh my God. Oh my God. So I'm watching this insane. I've watched this insane documentary about the serial killer Haddon Clark. Um, Hayden or Haddon? Haddon. Okay. I hadn't heard of that one. (laughs) Good job. (laughs) Take that to Reddit, you clever man. Um, It's on Max, and it's um, Michael Bay's production. Is he someone? Michael Bay's? Yeah, he's made some bangers. He's, like, talking to the serial killer in this. I mean, and it's very... Oh, do you know? Oh, he's... (laughs) 
I don't like that. I don't really like it either. But he's like, the whole thing is very Silence of the Lambs. Silence of the Lambs is referenced many times. This guy is evil incarnate and has probably murdered lots and lots and lots of people. What is wild, as I told you last night, is that his older brother, he has two brothers, his older brother, independent of him, Mm -hmm. like living in a whole different place from him on his own, Mm -hmm. the older brother, they don't even like talk that much, has killed someone. Mm -hmm. And both of them are like sometimes eating, you know, the people. So, but they don't know that each other's done this. No, it's not like a pact they have or anything. It's just a, it's a family it's vibe. So just why did you got to stop watching this stuff? I know. Why did I bring this up? Because it's crazy. Nature versus nurture. Is it like no? There was a reason. What the fuck were we talking about? Um, what were we talking the about? Sleeping Brains. lady photos or sleeping guy by the lady photos? No. Oh, the biggest scam. Oh. Do, do you want to use this as a platform that cannibalism is bad as a scam, as you've said before, <laughs> that you don't get why it's so taboo? Is that, that is the a, scam? That is totally different, that version of cannibalism. I just... You don't like people getting murdered, but in a, in a situation like Alive, the movie where they're playing crash and they had to eat people that were already dead, you don't see a problem with that. Yes. I mean... I also think that I have a very, you know, you told the story about the person whose eyes got eaten out by the rats, you know, after he died. Mm -hmm. You were so horrified by that detail. And my, I, that doesn't horrify me because I think maybe I have like a very black and white view of when you're, when you die and your spirit or energy or whatever leaves your body, your body is literally just meat. Yeah, but. The horrifying part isn't, I don't understand you. Okay. It's the horrifying part is walking in and finding the dead body with its eyes gone and like yes, rats all around. That's horrifying. That's a horrific scene. Yes. I'm not walking in and being like, you know what? No big deal though, because <laughs> it was going to happen. It's just me. Who you're cares? You're right. You're right. You're right. It is very traumatizing for the people finding Yeah, it. I would like to see you <laughs> handle that you're, is what I'm saying. Oh God. I would be... A mess. Yeah. I mean, that would ruin me. You're right. And I don't mean to be disrespectful. Obviously, these people's victims, like, horrifying. But my whole point is, as someone who doesn't eat meat, and you guys are all out there gnawing away at the, you know, whatever fucking part of the hawk, I don't, what's it called? You know, part of the cow, the sirloin, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Going, oh my God, that person ate what? It's like, you're also just kind of eating meat. Yeah. But when it's a victim, it's a whole different thing. Mm -hmm. Your victim, especially. Yes. Okay, just to be clear. Yes. You know what, too? This isn't a blanket statement because I don't want to do that to you. And I'm sure there will be times where I'm in a different mood. But just in life this past week... You've brought up a lot of these dark things. I would say in the last month or two months. <laughs> you know, you're watching a lot of this content, right? You don't need to share it as much with me. I kind of always bums me out. Even this morning, <laughs> this is not the first time I've heard about this particular serial killer today. Well, it's, you it's ke- like... I understand it's fascinating. You keep bringing it up to me. <laughs> well, it's... I'm done. Okay. I don't need to hear about this guy and his brother anymore, okay? Have you finished the doc or is there more? I finished it. I'll give you one... Oh, you finished it. Sorry. See, yeah. I'm like... <laughs> no, no. Great. But th- there are interesting takeaways that I think are worth talking about. Now's your moment. For example, this this monster who's serving two 30-year sentences for murder. It's We were talking about it on a more global scale of why is our justice system set up in a way that these horrific, violent criminals who per- perpetrate crimes against children and women and, like, just are opportunistic and calculated and manipulative and we know that they don't get rehabilitated sex offenders that have offended multiple times like 
we know the statistics. Mm -hmm. Why are they getting out of prison? Right, yeah. When there are people who are there for, for nonviolent crimes, like drug crimes or theft or whatever, who are sp spending their lives there. It is such yeah. a crazy system. And this man, they've only been able to prove two of the murders. He could get out of prison during his lifetime. Right. How crazy is that? It's fucked. That's all. I hope everyone... I don't think there's a person on the planet that would disagree with that. Oh, we were talking about the biggest scam of all time. Yeah. Well, fuck. Uh, Digital Dream Labs, that fucking robot Cosmo. I tried... I, that's a scam. It sure is. Jacob Hancher. That's a big old scam. Yeah. Ugh. Um. Can I give you an other news, kind of a fun life update? That's... That's what I'm craving right now. Okay. This isn't for right now. This would be more for like a little later in life. Mm -hmm. Like a couple months from now maybe. Oh, okay. I hope you'll support me in this. You know I'm going to be taking like oil painting classes, yes. which I'm excited about. Yep, very cool. I also am going to do a facelift of the children's bathroom. Very fun. Really? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That's so great. Yeah. I'm going to DIY it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm very excited. Okay. So I'm going to paint the beadboard. I'm going to put... What's the beadboard? Is that like wooden kind of paneling? I've heard you call it something else. Tongue and groove. Something else. Beadboard. When we were doing the cabin, was our name for that? I don't even know if we did that, but we were talking about it at one point. Yeah, I don't know. But anyway, wallpaper, new like fixtures. Hold on. <laughs> You're not doing the wallpaper yourself, I've been you? watching YouTube videos. Oh, I can do it. Oh, for fuck's sake. Now, paint um, the kind of wallpaper that I'm going to use. Uh -huh. What I will do is the first panel. And then if it goes poorly... I will hire out the rest. So I'm I'm like the first panel is like the easiest. You're not lining anything up yet. But anybody probably could do the first panel. I think that it's going to be fine. And I believe in myself and I can do hard things. <laughs> there's there's times where I think it's worth getting an expert on things and I think wallpaper is one of those things. And I think if there are any wallpaper installer people whatever there's probably a name for those people listening they're rolling their eyes right now listening to you be like i think i can do it really it's people a hang wallpaper like people build whole houses and yeah, i think i that could, know how to build houses i know but you can learn on youtube <laughs> <laughs> okay i guess we'll see how it goes would you ever, it makes me nervous would you ever want to get like a table saw no speaking of stuff though my buddy Josh just got some like crazy machine that like I don't know. Shines He's a big time carpenter. So. Like he knows how to work with it wood. It shines what rocks and stuff. He got some sort of rock machine oh. that he's just teased it to us. Like we're he was like, oh, I want to get one of these forever, and he sent us a picture, and we were all like, what the fuck is that thing? Because it's big, wait. and we can't wait to see what he makes with it. So you put rocks in it, and it shines them up? I have no idea. No, it's Those not are like just a, like rock tumblers. No, it's not a rock tumbler. This is something to like make things. I, I'm not giving enough example, but Josh, I'm excited if you hear this wait, to see what it is. But what does it do? Come on. Dig deep. I don't... I does don't, it polish marble? Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Just hold on. I'm going to show you the picture. Because we talked about it, and I don't remember. Wow. Right. It reminds me of some of the DNA extraction machines at the crime lab. For real? Mm-hmm. I don't think that's what this one does. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, he told us what it was, and then a few days passed, and then he sent that photo, and he said, I've never been more excited about something. Wow, what a fun... I've never been more excited about a tool. Wow, what a fun thing to have. That looks like an expensive tool, too. This seems like you're yeah. like, 
that's one of those things you probably wanted for a really long time. Mm -hmm. That would be like me getting, you know, there's like a certain guitar that I've wanted for, like that would be like, yes. yeah, that's spending that much money on a thing. That's, uh, maybe that's not the perfect example because this is a tool too. Anyways, go ahead. Speaking of Josh, I've wanted to ask you about this. So you have, a, there's a video game called Rocket League. Hell yeah. What platform is it played on? Anything. I have a Switch. They have Playstations. So certain games can be played on all things. Yeah. I think it's called multi-platform. Wow. Yeah. So. Computer, Switch, Xbox. You could use any of it for Rocket League. So you, BDT, who uh -huh. you know from college. Yep. Dear friend. Yep. Josh, who you know from elementary school. Yeah. Matt, your brother, who you've known since birth. Yeah. All four of you play Rocket League. Rocket League once a week on average. Yeah. Typically. And you like pair you play in teams. So mm -hmm. you, the teams alternate yeah. throughout time. Yeah. You're kind of aggressive in this game. Yeah. And you guys talk a lot of shit to each other. Sure. And I think that you're the one who talks the most shit, would you say? Absolutely. <coughs> it's funny you are bringing, I don't know exactly what you're bringing up, but I have something to say to you actually kind of about all this potentially. Okay. So go on. I think it's so beautiful that you have this. And this is something I think that started in the pandemic. Yeah, maybe. yeah. We've been doing it maybe three years. Four, I guess. Oh, wow. And for some reason, it's come up a bunch recently about how middle-aged men, it's like so important that you foster relationships. And, oh, it, I feel like our kids were saying, if someone's planning something, it's usually mom. Oh, and yeah. And then that turned into like this thing about, for some reason, it's harder for men to mm -hmm. like put the effort into maintaining relationships. and sure. And it usually has to do with, a certain thing that you're doing together with people. Like for you, for a while, you had a tennis buddy. So you that was like your social oh, yeah. thing that you would do. Sure. And it's different, I think, I, not to genderize everything, but I take a lot of pride and it's very important for my mental health to put effort into seeing my girls, mm -hmm. you know. But I think this Rocket League thing, I've been very impressed how you guys have maintained it. Yeah. I love that it's like you're kind of the center of the wheel, meaning like all these people are kind of linked through you. Sure, sure. And that is, I, I just wanted you to speak to that. How's that going? Are you fucking with me right now? A little bit? No. For real? I think it's something that we haven't talked about. Like, it's such a cool thing in your life. So you're not bringing this up because of my losses recently? No. Are you? No. Because, listen, okay, let me, sorry, I need to lay this out. We usually, we pair up two people each. So it might be Josh and I one week versus Matt and BDT. It swaps around. When the brothers are together, me and Matt, that feels <laughs> extra special because that's kind of how we started. That was like the first, we were teamed up the first time. And he's my brother. It's special, right? Yeah. Well, we used to dominate, I would say, quite a bit. You and Matt. You and Matt. But this past series, we, we do the best, uh, the team that wins the two games wins the series. So it's two out of three, best two out of three. Sometimes it's two games, sometimes it's three games. Well, we got smoked by the other team, right? And for the first time in the four years, my brother said, should we rematch them? And when I say smoked, we lost every single game. This is like, okay, this is so interesting. Mm -hmm. I'm bringing this up as a like, <laughs> wow, you guys have uh, s something so amazing. It's very rare, I think, for men of a certain age at the time <laughs> in their lives to maintain this sort of thing. You're turning it into <laughs> who's won and lost and like who. Because we haven't talked about this and I need to talk to you about it. Okay. And you bringing it up makes me, this is the most recent interaction we've had about Rocket League. What would justify Rocket a League. rematch? What would justify a rematch? Our egos being so crushed. But that's pathetic. Okay. <laughs> Remember what you just said just there, okay? In a minute. We'll, we're going to circle back to that. You saying that's pathetic. <laughs> pointing at me. <laughs> so anyways, we kind of make the decision, yeah, let's challenge them to a rematch. And how do you do that over text? 
Yeah, it was over text. Uh-huh. And it, and what did you say? I don't remember. And I was not, I don't want to throw anyone under the bus, but <laughs> this wasn't my idea. <laughs> okay. It was my brother's idea. But then I got on board. But And I think he would be okay with me saying that. He, I hope so. He, I think so. <laughs> that he would have spearheaded the idea. Okay. Regardless, <laughs> we decide to do another series with them. Okay. Everyone gets on board with it. The first match or the first night of the series, we get smoked again. We lose five games in a row. Okay. And it's the first. This is the rematch? On the rematch. Yeah. So uh, on each night, it's the first person to win five games. And then you have to win um, two nights. What would that be called? Anyways. So we get smoked. So the next week comes around and we have to win this night or we're out of the sea, we're out of this tournament again and we get smoked two tournaments in a row, right? Yes. Not going to be good. So I thought it would be kind of fun <laughs> and sort of hilarious and cute if my father gave us a pep talk. Your father? Yeah, cuz my dad likes to get involved. He likes to kind of my brother always, if my brother and I aren't on the same team, yeah. he'll let my dad know like if he won and whatnot. And my dad will kind of tease me about oh, it. Oh, I didn't of. know your dad had any involvement. That's yeah. so fun. So I thought it would be cool if my dad gave his sons a pep talk, which I don't know if we've ever gotten in this type of context, a sport in context. Again, so like, sorry. Yeah. You're asking your dad mm-hmm. to give you a pep talk? Yeah, if this is there's so many flaws in all of this, but I think I explained to my dad like, hey, here's the deal: we could use a fatherly pep talk. That's cute, right? I mean, kind of, but yeah, right, right. It was just the way it was just I thought it was maybe a team building, yeah, exercise. Anyways, we get on a Facetime with my dad. It goes horrible. <laughs> if anything, my dad has like a tone of sarcasm in his voice, and it's more like he knows we're gonna lose, and he's kind of messing with us. Okay, I do like give us. I can't, I can't, it's just like, <coughs> it was the worst pep talk you could ever imagine. And I think. Are you on Zoom with him? We're on, yeah, we're like on a Zoom thing, okay? It just, and are the, you and Matt going, what is happening? I, 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 yeah, I kept being like, dad, what do you do? Like this. I, I have a question for you. Yeah. And I, your dad's a wonderful dad mm-hmm. and we love him so much. Yeah. Has he ever given you a pep talk in your whole life? No, I'm sure he's giving me a pep talk, and it's not an odd choice because we're brothers, and my dad knows this game we play, and he likes to talk okay. about it. And it's our dad. He's giving a, I want to, I thought it was a- You want a fatherly- I thought it was a beautiful thing, You okay? want a, like, Field of Dreams type, or Rudy, like, you're gonna- Yeah. Just, yes. I thought it was appropriate, and it would be a good team building thing. right before the game? Yes. Like, 10 minutes before. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And it goes horrible. It's kind of funny that it goes horrible, but it it's horrible. Then I walk inside, I go into our bedroom to grab my iPad, which I need uh, for the Zoom of the game, okay? Mm -hmm. And you and I had an interaction, okay? (laughs) And I basically, I don't know the exact words I said, but I said something like, I'm going to play, it's a big game. And I don't know if I fished and (laughs) asked you, like, do you think we're going to win or something? I think you did, probably. And you said, no. (laughs) No. And I was like, whoa, that's messed up to say. And you said, you guys aren't going to win. Well, and look so at I, historically, well, his, recently. His, okay, historically, recently, yes. Historically, in the whole, in the last four years, we we prevail a lot. Okay. But so my dad just gave this horrible pep talk. And then you were also like, yeah, there's no fucking way. That no, was your I No, just said that no. was your atti- no, that was your attitude. <laughs> okay. And you and you had a little pleasure in 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 us not winning, I feel like. Okay. So you lost. Yeah, and then we lost. <laughs> so you're looking for someone to blame. Yeah. Look, you lost the whole tournament twice. Two Path- tournaments. Pathetically, for a ba- on no basis, you asked for a rematch. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. It's, it's so painful, all this. Is there any world yeah. where you, it seems, to, it seems to be that in your mind, had your dad given you guys this like amazing, inspiring pep talk of how you two are brothers, you have a, like, a, 
this f- third hand way of communicating that no one else gets. You get it. You're doing <laughs> you're, great. You're you guys need to just get on the same energetic wavelength yep. and then you are going to smash it. Yeah. What do those other two have? Nothing. They're they're they they're not in this, they're both tall, but and thin. <laughs> <laughs> Beyond that, what do they have? Right, right. You guys are brothers. Yeah. You have cellular DNA. You can connect. Okay, so that's... How hard is this assignment? You're crushing the assignment. So in your mind, your dad gives you that pep talk. You get off. You go, Matt, we got this. Yes. You go into the bedroom. You're getting your iPad or whatever. You go, hey, do you think we're going to win? And I said, babe, do you think you're going to win? And, and you I, say, yeah. And then you and say... And then I say, then you're going to win. Do you see how big of a difference those two things? You're saying this. You're saying this as it's like preposterous. Preposterous that this would help, right? Where you you think like none of those speeches in the locker room matter that the coaches give. You think the halftime speech during a Super Bowl doesn't matter what the coach says? Well, I think if like I don't know the Pee Wee League is playing like the Green Bay Packers. I'm not being mean right now. I'm just saying, like, you guys We're have not. lost so many times. And I have a question for you. <laughs> this doesn't make sense. I have a question you for you. You crushed the dad speech <laughs> just now. You understand. I do have a question. Do you think that you've let winning get in the way <laughs> of the spirit of this weekly... Um, ritual you have no, with your No, not at all. Not at all. And okay. it's all it's all super fun. Do you think you've ever really hurt someone's feelings in the smack talking and stuff? Probably. Yeah. Probably. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but Do you I think, think that they talk about you behind your back? <laughs> probably. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> you most likely. <laughs> Okay. We all have we all have different um you know, so my brother's a very sweet guy. So sweet. And so he he of everybody he's on the lower end of smack talking. Let's yeah, so give me everyone's does, personality. So, but in this when group. he does smack talk, yeah. it's so glorious. And he can get away with crazy he can say really crazy stuff sometimes because it's so funny because he doesn't smack talk as much. Right. It's not in his heart. Exactly. <laughs> I also can get away with like pretty abhorrent stuff too because I talk so much smack that it's like I'm You're gonna crossing have to the line. Escalate at yeah, some yeah, point. yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, um, yeah. Have so you I, ever really crossed the line where you're like, oh, okay? I don't know. Maybe I, I can't. So no. <laughs> I can't think of. That. <laughs> okay, then how's BDT's personality? Oh, so BDT is like he is for one a really good player and like just really consistent and solid and probably it's the best attitude of like, we're just going to have fun here playing. Right. He has the right idea. These are my pals. He's We're going to have a good time. I'm good at this. And he'll talk a little smack here and there, but yeah, he's he's great. And do you get caught up on each other's like lives? Oh, completely. We're chatting the whole time. Yeah, it's great. That's the, yeah, that's that's the The best part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Then Josh is, um, He's like pretty good, but when he's on, he's incredible. He sometimes gets. I'm not asking how they're gets, playing. No, I'm it's asking important. Their personality. No, it's important to know though, because <laughs> okay. he like he just like when he's in the zone, he's just in the zone. He's maybe the most emotional. Like if it's going badly for him in a game, you can yeah. see it the most. Like he'll be probably the most disappointed to lose sometime. And well, he be my, like, that's my interpretation. I don't. I'm kind of hoping go- none of them hear this. <laughs> Does he kind of go inward? Oh, if they start losing, he sometimes does towards the end. Yeah. He and I delight in trying to turn the screws when I see him retreating. So I might turn up <laughs> the heat a little bit. Uh-huh. He also doesn't like distractions if um, he calls uh, Travis and I chit and chat. Like if sometimes we talk too much and we start asking like maybe too many personal questions when the gameplay is getting really intense. <laughs> Um, but when he's on, and I'm just saying this because the last two months he has been on fire. And that eats get... away at you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's great that you have maintained these relationships in such a 
unique way. And I think it's rare for men to have this sort of thing. And I think it's important. Yeah, I love it. It's so, it's, it's really fun. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Good night. Oh, good night.